Hey, it's Joseph here. Since receiving the Oculus Quest, I have tested against different workflows and scenarios. Yeah, I actually played some games too, and I quite enjoy it whenever time allows. And speaking of VR games, I actually enjoy Beat Saber and Akron. Beat Saber is great whenever I can lock myself up for some time and then get some light workout done. Whenever I play the expert mode, it does leave me catching for breath. And that is a great usage of VR since we can't really go to gyms at the moment. Akron is a great game for game night or like the party time or whenever you have some guests over That's at the cool house. Game since it allows a lot of people to join into one session. Although that is difficult to do since with all social distancing, but Aha. I love the concept of the game. The one who's wearing the headset becomes a tree guarding the acorns and all other people join the session with their smartphones as the squirrels trying to steal the acorns away from the tree. Yeah. And overall it is quite intuitive, even the young ones like my children can join and enjoy all together. Anyways, let's back up to the professional usage of VR. In architecture, we have a very compelling use case scenario for VR other than just gaming. Showing the client the space and having them walk through the space allows you to carry useful discussion about design and then make them understand spatial awareness, the quality of the space, ultimately the better architecture. However, with one caveat, you gotta make sure the technology is all working correctly. Yeah, the concept of video conference is great, but how many times do you have a flawless session where no people is cutting in and out, no one is being muted or disconnected or delayed, I can't see your screen, uh, your screen is frozen, you're sharing a wrong screen. We've done that just way too many times. So making sure this VR technology is working for your presentation, it is also quite difficult to line up all of those correctly. Depending on your setup, you may need a computer with a really good GPU in it and also all of your connections correctly set up. And you may or may not need additional sensors calibrated and configured inside of your room to get things working correctly. With the introduction of inside out tracking, which means that you have a headset and then you track out, instead of having a sensor outside tracking your motion, has been great since you don't have to have sensors set up prior to your session. And for example, Oculus Quest basically has done that. It has these sensors around the headset so that's gonna track the space and you don't need to rely on external sensors. And basically it allows you to have a setup where you have no need for the prior setup. And with this headset, you basically could just turn it on and dive into the VR world. You don't need to set up things. However, for meaningful VR experience, you're actually needing to tether onto PC or rather rely on your PC's computational power to push the graphics onto your headset. This headset, although it can work natively, meaning not dependent on PC's performance, but it is quite limited. It is sort of the mobile processor and it cannot compute as many things. So for example, desktop applications such as Enscape will not work with this specific headset because it doesn't have native support for Oculus Quest. And in order to do that, you can connect via link which is USB 3 cable that you're gonna connect with the headset and your PC, which is quite simple. I just need to connect this to the PC, but yeah, that is still a wire that is attached to your headset. And personally, I have experienced way too many times where an experienced client or the peer who's using the VR headset worry about them tripping over wire in either hurting themselves or knocking over expensive equipment that we have. I do wanna stay away from having too many wires in the scene and having one wire is definitely a step in the right direction, but you know, 
what if there's no wire whatsoever? And there's actually other solutions out there, especially I've seen for HTC Vive where you have additional equipment that goes on the headset itself and attached to the battery and then there's additional sensor on your machine where it allows you to have untethered experience, no wired, therefore wireless experience. However, yeah, it introduces a different type of equipment. You gotta have a battery pack on yourself. It's not really an easy solution and you have to invest a lot. I'm not sure if it really adds that much of a value and I've heard finicky things about it too. However, what if I told you that you can actually use Oculus Quest to connect to your PC wirelessly without any wires, wirelessly, and actually enjoy the PC performance and push all the graphic computation that your computer does to your headset. And with virtual desktop, that is possible. Apparently this was known for gaming community for a while. However, I wanted to test it against architectural workflows such as Enscape. So I have tested and I have confirmed it works. So I wanted to show it to you. There's a lot of bits and pieces that you need to get this technology working. So you've got to make sure you have 5G Wi-Fi on your premises, whether your home or office. And you've got to make sure that you have virtual desktop purchase for your Oculus. And you've got to have SideQuest installed and loaded onto your headset in your desktop. And you can side load the virtual desktop. The process is quite convoluted. I'm not gonna lie, it took me about an hour to get those things working, but I want to tell you, it works. And you can carefully read up on their website and follow through step by steps. After a couple of rounds of troubleshooting, it just magically works. And I haven't yet broken it. It just works. So I have this window open, which is virtual desktop streamer. And that basically hosts the session on your computer. Whenever your Oculus Quest, you turn on the virtual desktop in there and look for a signal, your computer is inside of the same 5G network, sending out signals and it detects your computer cell, all that computer wizardry. And then I'm just gonna put on the headset and then basically I'm actually seeing my desktop. It is not like a VR, but I can actually move around and click around as you can see, I'm not touching the mouse, but I can actually move my screen on here. I can select different things and do the mouse and a keyboard even. So I actually have that virtual desktop. This was actually made to do your computer whilst wearing your headset, but you can allow VR games or VR application in here too. Okay, I have this typical VR testing model open and then I'm just gonna enable Enscape. And as soon as Enscape opens up, I'm gonna go back to SketchUp side and then enable VR. And you see how it detects my movement. The Steam VR will load automatically and then it just detects my headset. And you see, I am not tethered in any way. So I'm gonna step back. I trust that you can see my screen and then I can basically swim around my model. I don't have to have any wire and yet this just works flawlessly and I can enjoy the performance of PC, GPU, change time of the day, make it into sort of afternoon or evening. Actually that's night, isn't it? So stars, the night scene. It's looking a bit too dark, so let's lighten up to back, go back to during the day. Yes, I do see a little bit of artifacts or noises due to the compression that's happening on the video. However, it is not too distracting and still be able to feel the space as if you're really there and which is basically what you're looking for. Without the wire, I can just fully walk around. Obviously, my room isn't large enough to really walk around, but if you have a space, you can certainly do that. And I also wanted to test other desktop VR applications such as Prospect from Iris VR. Can go into this model here and launch. Maximize the screen so you guys see what I am seeing as well. Okay, I'm in this tutorial mode. 
Push your thumb forward on the number pad on the right hand controller, point towards the model and release. There you go, great job. And then point to the sun settings to your left hand menu and pull the right hand trigger. Fantastic work. Scale model mode, and I can actually be in the scale model mode and I can look into the model, look at it this way and then carry on design discussions, which I find quite useful. So we can talk about the skylight solution, the structure, and then the street that is adjacent and how it opens up. I really like this mode for design communication and we can talk about different things and you can just kind of e easily swim around the model, scale that smaller, bigger, rotate, however, as if it is sort of physical model that you have built. And then I can also jump into the model in real scale. So here I am into my model, the same model that you are looking at perhaps a little bit of different graphic fidelity. And then I can also take photos so that I can report to that later. And then I can do annotations. Um, I like that one there. I don't like those signs. Just get rid of those things. You can circle certain things. Uh, the balustrade is weird. So let's make sure to take care of that. I can measure, I can make sure how Hide the countertop, that's way too low, so we gotta fix those things. Sun settings, layers, viewpoints that you have in the model. I can move to this scene here, and let's take a picture. I don't think you can do selfie, can you? But you can definitely take a picture this way. And then I can actually go back out to the model mode, and there's actually something really cool. Enable the section plane. I can actually have a section plane and then orient this however. So I can actually cut a section into my model, bring it close to me, and then actually see this model in section. That is really cool. I really like this feature. And then see this in much finer detail. Let's go in there. Let's look at some furniture. Go here, and then for example, like this table here, I can inspect, inspect element, and then I can click on this one, and then that's gonna tell me what sort of materials it has, what layer it belongs to, which allows me to talk about those specific type of furniture that I have put in. And if it has BIM information coming from Revit, then it's gonna have a lot more meaningful data to look at. And great thing about Prospect is the fact that you can do multi-people session, meaning you can have VR conference call and have people walk around the space and you can do a virtual VR presentation yourself. So I wanted to introduce those feature for you guys on Prospect while showing completely wireless solution of virtual desktop that is possible on Quest. It just opens up the door to a lot of different things that you can have for the VR solution in the architectural world. I'm actually interested in hearing your own setup and your own VR workflow where this may or may not be helpful for you. Please leave a comment about that. Let me know if you have found this useful by leaving a like on the video and subscribe to my channel if you wanna continue watching these type of videos. And thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time, bye.